run into, if you run into buyers that think that they're going to go out and get a deal in the marketplace because they don't have an agent, tell them they're stupid and tell them the reason is they have no one looking out for their best interests. They just help the listing agent make more money and the seller probably would have accepted a lower offer if I were negotiating or if you had representation negotiating on your behalf, right? I okay. think the thing that's worked for me the most is just when I say, you know, their fiduciary duty or whatever they say is to the sellers. So, of course, you know what I mean? So it's such a conflict of interest. You're, of course, they're, they're going to get the sellers the best deal. Basically, yeah. I just throw it out that you really need someone fighting in your corner. They're not fighting in your corner because they've already signed the paperwork saying that they're going to fight in the seller's corner, basically. You're absolutely right. So the, the key I find with any of this, and any time you're handling objections or explaining stuff, keep it simple. Once we get long-winded, like that was probably very long-winded, I would just tell them this. Mr. Buyer, if you were in a lawsuit and it was like the case of your life worth $300,000, would you represent yourself or be unrepresented? Probably not. You'd probably be an idiot if you did. And that is just like this. You're going in totally blind, unrepresented, and you don't want to do that. So the whole thought with this conversation is we've got to position ourselves as having value. That's the problem is people don't often perceive agents as having any value. And the problem with that is sometimes it's true if agents suck or they're not skilled, knowledgeable, and ready to help. So let me lay out some pieces of a buyer presentation. Um, I'll lay it out in the format that I want to share with you how I present it in. But let's say you meet with a buyer for the first time. What are some of the things that you should talk about? Joel, what's something you should talk about? Well, if it's a lead, just what, what I can do for them. Yeah. So I call that create value. Or, well said, what I can do for you. Yeah. Meaning, why would you even want my services? What am I offering? What's my value proposition, right? So, and then again, I'll lay this out. But let's just brainstorm the ideas to start with, and then we'll get, dig deeper into each layer. So I'm going to create value. And then you could call this, why hire me? Why hire me to help you find a home? What are some other things that are going to come up in this conversation? Tyler. Qualified as a paying cash. Yep. Part of this whole presentation, either in advance of the appointment or perhaps during the appointment or as a result of the appointment, they got to get pre qualified at some point, right? What are some other elements to a buyer presentation? What are some of the other things we're going to talk about, Leanne? Um, what they're looking for. Yeah. What? Needs, yeah. wants. What do you need? What do you want? What are some other things? Motivation. Motivation. What else? Frame. Time frame. Yes, else That's a good point to that. So we'll just add selling? Question mark. Anything else? Let me add this one because it'll go into it. And then we're going to frame the actual presentation. Expectations. What to expect? Let me share with you what's going to happen. Let me share with you, Mr. Buyer, what to expect when buying a home. Da, 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 da. You're going to go through it. Okay? So let's go all the way back to the beginning. And I love that we have like newer agents because this helps you guys see it. Like this is what I I didn't get any of this kind of training when I started. It was like, there's your desk. <laughs> um, so it's cool to kind of see it from the beginning. Um, let's, let's start with this. And sorry, you're Michelle, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how we would first have this appointment. We talked about this a little bit before, but where are some places that this might happen? Where would we meet with the buyer for the first time? At their house. So think about this. Just break it down to the very fundamentals. You want to get in front of the person. You really do. If you can do it over the phone, a lot of times you can. But if you're going to close somebody in the next two weeks, that's our goal. Let's start with this premise. 
This workshop is called How to Close Buyers in 15 Days. Number one, meet them face to face. If you want to close buyers fast, you, I mean, again, a lot of the people that I get going and working with in the beginning, we haven't met face to face. But if I'm dead committed and I have enough time, I want to meet them. Why not, right? So where are some places that we would meet? Uh, their house? Where else? The property. The, that they want the, to see. the property. The first property they want to see. Great. Where else? The office. The office. Get them in here. Where else? Coffee shop. Coffee shop. Restaurant. Anywhere. Okay. Meet them, but set that up. And that's all about setting the appointment. If you want to get people to take action fast and get them into momentum, set the appointment. And if you want to be a rock star, before you meet them, what would I want to do? Have them contact the lender before you meet with them because then you didn't spend all that time to find out that they couldn't qualify. So this is how that's going to sound. Hey, Tyler, let's plan on meeting uh, over at Starbucks on Friday at, at 2 o'clock if that's okay with you. Before we meet, so that you can be ready to buy a home and get exactly what you want, I'm going to have you call Jesse, our lender over here at Rand Life. And uh, he can literally pre-qualify you in 15 minutes over the phone. And then we'll know, number one, that you can buy a home. And number two, how much you want to spend. Wouldn't that be helpful to know before we meet? Completely. Absolutely. So I want to have that set up. Can he call you today at 3 o'clock? Sure. Perfect. Let's do that. So wouldn't it make sense to actually tee up, get that phone call? So again, we're getting back to how you actually lock, load, and get a buyer going quickly. So we're going to get them pre-qualified. So that comes back up here. Pre-qual. What's been your experience with buyers, guys and gals? Are people pretty willing? Mike Carter, for you, are people willing to talk? Like, do they, do they give you resistance when you say something like that, typically? Yeah. Pretty cool about it. Has it? Does anyone ever run into any resistance? Because it's possible, right? Tyler, you're shaking your head. What, what could you hear? Well, sometimes you hear, like, well, are they going to pull my credit? Is that going to hurt my, you know, my credit score? What would you guys say as agents? Well, you ask the question, you don't get to answer it. So what would you guys say? I would just have them call them and, and talk to them about the loan, like about to the LO, instead of giving any advice. I try to shy away from that. Jesse, what should we say? Because you know better than anyone else. What if, what if somebody said that? Well, I don't want them to pull my credit, or I might have a buddy, or I don't know that I'm ready to take that step. How should we handle that? Uh, I would say, you know, the, the loan officer will explain, you know, what exactly pulling your credit means. But my understanding is that it's not going to affect your score in any way. And I definitely feel like it's the, the next move to making sure we get what you want in, in your house. And that's it. Just simply say, look, this is step one. If you can't take step one, I, we just can't take step two, three, or four. So it's kind of the beginning, right? So I would just tell them that. But here's something you could say is like, look, it's up to you whether or not you want to have them pull your credit. That will give you a better pre-qualification. You'll be that much more certain. And ultimately, we do need it. Um, but it's not going to hurt your score unless you pull it five times in one month. You're not going to do that, are you? No, we're not. OK, great. And the good news is, if you don't like Jesse or you don't like our lender we're sending you to, you don't have to use them. I just need to know that you can buy so, and here's the key line, so that I can sell your offer to the seller with confidence. That's what you say. So that I can sell your, so that I can sell your offer to the seller and their agent with confidence, I need to have you talk to my preferred lender. That's the script. So now I've got them that far, right? So got them pre-qualified. We're meeting them face to face. I want to lay out for you two pieces of this presentation. We talked about this last week. There's, there's kind of two sides to it. We talked about this in listing homes, right? You're going to connect or connect and create rapport. Second, you want to create value. Sorry, I'm trying to organize my notes. Are we going off the top of one, or is this kind of? 
Just <laughs> make it a, make it the way you want. The mind's messy, fill so fill in the blanks. So. What we're doing here, though, this is you can just put these side by side. These are the steps, but I actually, this isn't the presentation. So what these are, these are elements of the presentation. This is the order. This is going to be your outline. Thanks for clarifying that. I'm all over the place. Um, so this is the elements, or so let's call this keys to a great presentation. Keys to a great presentation. You're first going to connect and build rapport. What are some ways that we do that? Leanne, what's a way you connect with somebody or create rapport? Ask them about themselves or ask them something. Ask a lot of questions, right? Ask questions. Ask questions. Um, other thoughts. How else do we create rapport? Mike Carter. I like to just keep things light and just show them Friendly, easy, I'm easy to work with. Keep it simple, right? So we're going to connect with them. We're going to create value. Um, and I'm going to show you the how-tos in our outline. <clears throat> this might come into it, but I don't want you to overcomplicate it. If you run into resistance and they talk about working on their own or with another agent, you need to separate yourself from the competition. And that's simply helping people understand why they should work with you. And it's, Michelle, can I share with you what, why you may want to hire me? You see, most agents, and we talked about this framework, most agents will set you up on an automatic list of homes that come and never look at them, and they'll want you to pick the homes. And then they'll wait for you to call and say, Dave, I want to go look at houses, or that agent. What I do, though, versus, versus me, I handpick the very best homes that are right for you. And I'm only going to show you those ones that fit. Isn't that what you would want? Great. So that's how you can create value is, again, by separating yourself from the competition. Then in every good appointment, there should be a close, right? You should move them to action. And then the fifth part of this. If it's a great presentation, it probably won't come up, but you've got to be ready to handle objections. Okay, so that whole piece, what we just kind of looked at right here, those are just the keys. Those are the elements to a great presentation. Now we want to get into the actual presentation itself. Okay. So you can do whatever you want. This doesn't, just like everyone has a, their own listing presentation, people probably have their own buyer's presentation as well. And your presentation may not look like mine. Um, somebody that's been doing it for a little while, like Olivia, do you have a presentation that you use, kind of a, a standard or at least an outline of kind of what you do use? Okay. Awesome. So you kind of have something that you do. Janae, is there a process you use when you're meeting with a buyer for the first time? Do you have a little bit of a presentation you use? Um, not exactly. I mean, I do have like, some questions I ask and the paperwork is set ready for them. Pretty simple though, right? You can do whatever you want. Let me just give you this one again, because frame it the way you want. But mine starts with this, an introduction. So we sit down. Hey, T, it's good to meet you. Thanks for coming in. You know, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me a little bit about your family. All those things that I'm using to create and connect and rapport. When I'm ready to get into the meat of the conversation, this is what I do, is I like to say, let me give you a quick overview of the four things we're going to talk about during our appointment. And you don't need to make it super formal if it's an appointment. An appointment. Hey, let me just give you a quick overview of the things that I wanted to share with you as we talk. First, I wanted to tell you a little bit about agency and what it means to have an agent representing you in the purchase of a home. 
Second, I want to share with you what to expect so that you can be prepared for the process of buying a home and also just to know kind of what's likely to happen. Third, I want to find out more about your wants and needs. And then finally, we're just simply going to agree to work together. And I want to think a better way to say that because I didn't want to write contract or whatever. Um, let's call this start the process. And this is how I would say that. So I want to just give you a quick overview of the four things that we're going to look at as we meet today, Michelle. First, I just want to explain to you a little bit about agency and what it means for me to be your agent. Second, I also want to share with you some expectations as far as what you can expect this whole process to look like and maybe a little bit about how long it could take to, to find a home. And then I want to make sure that I totally understand what's most important to you in a home and really make sure I understand what you're looking for. And then, and here's the key, as long as you feel comfortable with me and confident that I'm the right agent for the job, then we can take care of some paperwork and get the process started. Does that sound fair enough? I mean, is that a pretty reasonable intro, right? That's, most people are going to be like, okay, cool. So that's my outline. And so if there is a piece between these steps, this is where I say, as long as, and then I would just call this paperwork. We're going to take care of some paperwork so we can get the ball rolling. And then I always ask, is that fair enough? Great. So that's a pretty good outline, right? So what are some things that we would want to talk about under agency? So if I'm going to explain what agency is, I want them to kind of understand our relationship. What are some things we might talk about? Tyler. Just kind of tell them you're going to consult and advise them, and you're going to do everything you can to you know, have their best interest in mind, and you got their back. That's it. And here's the script. I want to give actually, this is where you create value and you can also separate yourself from the competition. Here's what I would say. Um, say if I were talking to Michelle. Michelle, let me just share with you what my job is as your agent. And then I would do this. And this is what I would write out. Here's your presentation. Number one is to consult and advise. So first, I need to consult and advise you. And that could just be you know, about the process, about what to expect, about you know, some things you might want to know or think about while consider, you know, working through the process. And then I'm going to advise you throughout this process as to what the right home might be for you, some things we might want to consider as we buy. So that's number one. Second, in terms of my job, makes sense, is to find homes for you to look at and consider. And if you notice, when I, dis when I show my listing presentation and I talk about my job, these are the exact same four that I share. There's just one thing changed. Instead of to market and expose your home for a seller, for a buyer, it's to help you find homes to look at and consider. Third is to negotiate. I'm going to negotiate the most aggressive terms for you, meaning the lowest sales price and the best terms. And fourth is to oversee the transaction to a successful close. So putting that all together, would you, Michelle, would it be OK if I told you a little bit about what my job as your agent is? She would be like, sure, that sounds good, Dave. Great. So number one, just to consult and advise you through the process. Second, to find you the absolute very best homes on the market. Third, to negotiate the absolute best price and terms for you. And fourth, to oversee the transaction all the way to a successful close. 
And then, if you're good, you might ask a question like, do you find value in that? Did that does that sound like that would help you? And hopefully she's saying, yeah, I think so. So if you get somebody that says, I don't want an agent, or you run into this resistance over the phone, take the time to educate them, and you can actually use this as an objection handler. So Janae, you think you might save money shopping on your own? I could appreciate that, and always be for them. Always be on their side. I joke about calling them an idiot, because they are, but you got to finesse that. Say, most people don't see values in buyer's agents just because they don't understand the job of an agent. Can I share with you the job of a good buyer's agent? They're actually going to dot, 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 and walk them through that stuff. And then once you've done that, then say, do you find value in that? And hopefully they do. They may say, no, I can do that. And if they're that person, psh, next. I usually want to just keep going. Because you get to choose who you're going to work with and who you're not going to work with. Um, this is just stuff I've been trained on and stuff that I've, I think. Is there anything else that you guys feel like should be added to this? Is there anything else that you think is part of our job? Most of it kind of falls under that, but if you like something or you have something that you want to share, add it. Mike? Well, I think just under like starting the process, like along with paperwork, I mean, one of the first things that I try to do, like it kind of goes back to number four, is like on the clothes. I want them, if they're not already pre-qualified or pre-approved, like, I want to get them like over to a loan officer like as soon as possible. Immediately. Because I don't, you know, I don't want to necessarily go through like all those things and try and like send them homes and do all this. If I don't know if they're going to be a qualified buyer though either. Absolutely. So, I mean, I guess what you're saying is you want to make sure that they're qualified before you even get into this conversation, or certainly before you started doing these things, right? Well, even I mean, really, so like just this weekend, like I had a, a guy that a lead that I got earlier last week and I got a hold of him and took him out to show him the house because it was just around my neighborhood too, so it wasn't a big deal. But I said, hey, you know, I just I want to make sure that, you know, you and I are, are able to work together. So I think the, the wording I used. So I said, I have a loan officer. I'd love to have him reach out to you and just make sure that this is something that's going to make sense for us, you know. Really just saying, I want to see if you're qualified. Yeah. And, and so I just had my loan officer gave him a quick call. Obviously, he didn't like run full credit, but he just, you know, went down, just checklist of everything. He said he called me back like ten minutes later. Yeah, he's probably pretty good. He's like, yeah. I think you're wasting your time if you go and take him out. Sure. Yeah, you can totally get a read on that, and I agree with you, Mike, in terms of try and do something before this. But I'm not saying you can't do this presentation and then have them talk to a lender. It just comes down to efficiencies. I'm all about efficiencies. You want to move quick and fast, Jesse. I was just going to say, and you know, if, if you do the process right, like you've said, they should be able to close and just sign the, the brokerage agreement automatically. But what I've done in the past, I'd, you know, I, I'm happy to help, is seems to me like buyers are oftentimes more willing to do paperwork for a loan pre-approval than maybe signing and committing to working with a specific agent, especially if they're on the fence or have somebody they know. And so I, I will slip in if the agent will tell me, hey, I can't get them to sign it by a broker, will you try? And I'll slip it in with my pre-approval docs that I have them just docu-sign, and half the time I can get them to sign it That's and not, not even worry about Jeez. it. So. Hey, that just made it worth your time to be here, right? We can leave now. <laughs> so, But there's little things like that that make all the difference because if somebody's are, you, it, you, it's crazy, we're all like this. You put somebody in process and they just do the process, right? I'm that way. I don't stop and look at everything, read it. I'm just like ding, 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 just signing stuff. So yeah, that can be, and you know, granted we should probably mention that you know, these are forms that can help us get the ball rolling, help Dave you know, write your offer for you. You can allude to it, probably should. Um, but that is absolutely something that can happen. So. We'll talk more about this process of getting contracts signed because that is a key piece of agency or just how to get agreement that you're working together. One of the worst mistakes I think we make as agents, we never get clear with somebody on our relationship. Is it just me? You're working exclusively with me or do you have like six agents that are out there in the marketplace calling you with homes? Because if you're not willing to work exclusively with me either by contract or commitment, I know that your word is your bond. I just don't have the time, the energy, and the money to commit to finding you a home. I'm sorry. So we're going to talk about that here in just a second with regard to the close. 
Okay, so, so far we've talked about explaining ed agency, helping people understand our job. Pretty straightforward, right? Expectations. What are some expectations we would want to set? Tyler. About how many homes you're going to see. How many homes they should plan on seeing before they write an offer. This is one of the things that agents, I, did, I was stupid in the beginning. I just, I didn't say that. And so people didn't know what was normal. So the number of homes. In a marketplace like this, where there's low inventory and things are selling fast, how many homes do you think is probably reasonable? Like not with us just saying, not just because we want to hurry and get somebody into a house, but because we know that that's probably what it should take. Four Ballpark, I don't know that there's a right answer. There's not going to be a lot of options. If you're buying in 30 days, can you sit and wait and watch new inventory come on the market? No, no you can't. You just don't have that luxury. If you have that luxury, meaning you're not under a time constraint, good on you. Sit and watch new homes come on the market. But if you're ready to write an offer, put some under contract, and you need to be moved in in you know, 30 to 60 days, you have two weeks to shop. That's it. Well, and the, this one buyer, he said he didn't want it. He's like, I have till August to buy. But I told him, I said, if you find something you like, it's going to be gone. And and I, I was like, so if you find something you like, and we wrote an offer, he was under contract, like the second. Yeah, I mean, is is there any reason to even start showing homes unless somebody's shopping to buy? I mean, I guess, I guess if they want to, just to get educated with the process. But here's what it comes down to. This is the this is how you make this decision. Number of deals I plan to close. in 2016. So let's take some for instances. My goal is to close 50 plus homes this year. How many homes can I afford to show somebody? 10 or less in my opinion. If my goal is to do probably 30 deals and most of those are buyers, I mean, I don't know that there's a direct correlation, but you can probably spend a little more time with that buyer. You probably have time. You could probably shop over the course of 30 days, right? And if my goal is to sell maybe 15 homes, I mean, I could probably shop for a couple months, right? So it all comes down to your goals and your motivation. And you use that as a, as a precedent for what people am I willing to work with. And it's not an ego thing. It's just it's a fit thing, right? If their if their time frame is different than the service that I can provide, are we a fit? I mean, we're not, right? What I do doesn't work for what they need. We're not a fit, and that's what this conversation is often is about: is creating and seeing if there's a fit. And we might not be, but I'll tell you what: as a good agent, if it's not a fit with me, someone on my team, another agent around me, somebody else in the office. I'm not going to lose the business. I'm just going to tee up with somebody else. Me, me, me. Give it to me. There you go. <laughs> Michelle is the fit, right? Because, right, you're not trying to sell 50 homes this year, right? I mean, that's hey, I'll fair. Them, I'll take them all. I'll baby everybody. I don't care. But that's smart business, right? And I still want to be the person that helps them, provides value, or oversee that. But are you guys OK to work with me that way? If I sent you a lead T, would you be open to working with somebody that was motivated, but they just probably needed to see more homes than I could show them? Yeah, you OK with that? So let's work together, right? And if Jesse or some of our lenders here has them pre-qualified, we've already got all of that business kind of locked up inside of this organization anyway. They're working on the loan side. They're working with us on this side. And I'll probably put a listing on the market that they'll want to buy. So that's the whole mindset. Let's not be dumb and pass up business, but just be sensible, right? All right, expectations. Number of homes to see. What are some other expectations that we would want to set? Let me ask. Mike. Well, I was just going to say, like, one thing that I try to, you know, depending on where I am with the process, is just telling, like, where the market is. That, so that this they, is huge. Like, just kind of, like, how they, you know, when you're talking, like, four or six homes, like, well, you know, well, I might want to get 20. Or you need to understand that the market's not going to allow you to probably see 20. Because, you know, with those three or four or five that you may like, they're all going to be gone if you're not happy. This is huge, and this actually sometimes you have to show people. And this is well, this is how this works: you bring them in, 
If you're really needing to educate somebody, and you might want to consider doing this anyway, bring them into a conference room like this where you can show them or just in front of a computer and let's say, Mike, I just want to share with you a little bit about the market so you can know what to expect. Let's put in the city that you're looking in, the price range, and some basics about the house. Click. Okay, we just shrunk from there's 2,300 active homes on the market in Salt Lake County. Well, now we've got 120. Out of those 120, we're going to put in a few parameters and then hit the button, and it shrinks to about 20 or whatever those things do uh, or whatever those numbers look like. And then you go through and say, let's look at those 20. No, 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 no. All right, we just shrunk your list to 10. Now, drive by these 10, and I bet you'll throw out five. And I would actually set that as an expectation. Before we go out and look, if we're going to go through this process the way we really should do, drive by all the houses before I show you. Because I don't want to waste my time or yours pulling up on something that we're not going to see. So if you really want to get efficient, you really want to get good, have them drive by the houses. Uh, that's how I would want to shop. I would want to go look, I'd just roll by, check them out all out on my own from the outside. Then I would tell the agent what ones I wanted to get inside. That's just how I would do it. Tyler. I would say this more good it's not always possible to put the house fast you're going under contract. Yeah, no, I mean, you got to have, and I agree. I mean, I'm just saying if you have, like, we're going to get together on Friday, but part of the expectation should be the fact that, look, we need to get out there fast and see them fast. And if a good home comes on the market, you're going to have to, like, take some time off of work and meet me at the property. That's what I'm talking about so that people aren't thrown off guard when you're like, hey, can you get over here today? And if you like it, can we write an offer? It's not me trying to be a sleazy salesperson. It's about the market. No, yeah, but it's saving time for them and you. There's so many people that you drive at the house and they know instantly that they're not, they would never live in that neighborhood. So why not eliminate that? From the get go. Yep. No, I agree with that, but if you don't have time, like we're seeing homes go under, under contract yeah. for hours. I mean, do you want to risk losing a sale for them to go? And I guess what I'm prefacing, I, you, you guys are talking about the same thing, but just different sides of it is like if I'm saying it's today, Monday, and I'm going to go show homes on Saturday, and we're teeing up our list right now, right. I am going to invite them to ask I to drive that. by all of them. But yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm talking about. So in expectations, don't get too hung up, but here's absolutely some ideas. Number of homes to see. How quickly they might need to write an offer. Um, earnest money. Earnest money. How much they're going to spend on inspection. Yeah, how much money they might need for, you know, you're going to need about $450 for a home inspection-ish. Plan on having, you know, depending on the price range, at least a grand, you know, in earnest money, but preferably more. Um, kind of set those expectations. Then you can get into the wants and needs. And actually, during this set the expectations phase, this is actually the place that I would recommend educating them on the home buying process. Let me show you a little bit about what that process actually looks like from starting and deciding to getting pre approved to now that you've found the home. And for coming today, you each get one of these. So this should be in your buyer presentation packet. Jesse probably has something like this, but there you go. So this should be a piece in your packet, right? Sorry to make you get up there, Rachel. Because then, and you might want to walk through it with them, because this is helping them know exactly what to expect. When I bought my first house, we bought a fizz, but I was the idiot. That's what's awesome. And uh, I was the idiot, and I freaking lost money, I bet. <laughs> Thinking of the offer I wrote, I did. I wrote, I wrote the stupid offer. I wrote 3% less than the list price. Idiot. So that, that sheet right there will help people to see the process. So during expectations, walk them through that thing. And having something visual like that is very good, certainly in your packet. We're going to try and add more to the packet. But just as you guys have a listing presentation packet, as I said, also you should have a buyer's presentation packet. OK, so once we've gone through expectations, now just simply wants and needs. This is the easy part. We all probably know how to do this. What I would do, though, is drill down, get specific. Like, what are the musts? Is a three-car garage a must? And often, you have to remind people through the process. They'll send you crap that doesn't fit, right, Tyler? All the time. All the time. Send you a house that has a two-car garage, and you said, look, you said a three-car is a must. So that I'm providing you the highest level, just help me understand, has that changed, or are we still saying this is a must? Because you really have to be able to lead buyers. That's one thing you'll find, especially right now in this market. You have to be a strong leader. 
And you have to remind people what they're doing. People forget what they're looking for. They forget why they want to buy. It's your job and our job as agents to remind them about their motivation and to steer them correctly, right? So this piece is pretty easy. Um, once I've done that, then I would typically just say, I would cast the vision. Meaning, hey, Michelle, you've told me all about what you're looking for. I mean, I can imagine this house, one level, backyard for summer barbecues. I mean, this is sounding great. We're going to be in South Jordan. I really feel like we can find this for you. Are you ready to get the process started? That's how I'm going to start the close. Are you ready to get the process started? Great. And now you're actually going to take them through your process of how you choose to work with people. I would actually just encourage you right now with the way the market is. <clears throat> I, I don't know. I have mixed feelings on this. Try and get people to sign buyer broker agreements. If it's going to be the thing that kills the deal, then try and get their commitment to work with you personally and nobody else. And I'll kind of give you an idea for how that should work. But if you're a pro and we're working in an ideal world, it would just be you've already got their name, their information on the buyer broker agreement. You're charging them a 295 file fee. That's the only thing in there. It's a six month contract. And I'll walk them through the paperwork and I'll say, hey, Michelle, here's the paperwork. This, by signing this, you're saying two things. One, that you want me to find you a home. And two, that you're okay with me getting paid once you've found the perfect home. Is that fair enough? Yes? Great. And then we're going to sign the contract. But you also need to be ready, if you need to, to handle objections. But try and get them to sign the contract. If you're really committed to that, um, what are some reasons people don't want to sign contracts with buyer's agents? They might know somebody else. What would be some other reasons that somebody would not want to sign an agency agreement with a buyer's agent? They're just not educated how it works. Well, they just I met you. Some people just yeah, like, they just some... met, like... yeah, I don't know you. So the reason I'm asking you these questions, I'm going to show you how to overcome them. What are some other objections you might run into? I just met you. They think that they can get a whole bunch of agents sending them stuff and build, and they can find something better. Yeah, like, like somehow if I commit to you that I'm missing out on yeah, other I'm houses. Yeah, I'm going to miss out on all the other things that yeah. all these other agents It's totally have. legitimate, right? So what you need to be ready to do is if, again, if you're trying to get people to sign contracts to work with you, is just be able to overcome those. So here's just some thoughts for you. If you want them to sign a contract, one, you could offer a satisfaction guarantee. So it looks like this. Hey, Michelle, I'm going to put in the contract that if I'm not doing my job, which is to communicate with you regularly, give you ideas, and take you out to show you homes, you can fire me. Put it in writing. Put it on an addendum to the buyer broker contract. Give them that. It's yeah. one way to overcome that objection. I had a guy that was working with two agents when I came into the picture. And I said to him, I said, so have you signed any contracts with these agents? And he said, no, I haven't signed anything. They're just sending me information and blah, 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 blah. And I, I just flat told him. I said, I know a lot of agents will do that, but the law says I have to have a contract signed with you before I can show you into a home. And I just told him, I said, I know most agents will just take you out and let you see things, but I said, I'm not going to do that. You have to sign a contract with me before I'll show you a home. And he did. And he did. He signed it. So you can present that. Maybe I need to try that one because um, I don't think that's true. <laughs> it sounds hell. That sounds great, though. <laughs> no. So the idea, though, is you said it with confidence. You said it with certainty. It was your standard. Who cares what the law even says? My standard. And this is kind of, this is where, here's my script for that. Tyler, I'm willing to spend the time, the energy, and the money necessary to find you the perfect home. Are you willing to work exclusively with me? Yes, great. I'm willing to spend the time, money, energy necessary to find you the perfect home. Are you willing to work exclusively with me? Great, perfect. Just sign this contract saying that you will. Dave, I hate contracts. I just, I just won't do it. If I feel great about Tyler, this is what I'm going to say. Tyler, you're a man of your word. I can tell that. And I don't even need a contract with you because I can tell that you're straight up. So we'll just shake on it and I'll make them shake my hand. Because if they're going to screw me after they shake their hand or shake my hand, let them burn, you know, because that's their integrity, not mine. Yeah, and that's still a loose place to be, 
but I would rather leave it that way than nothing. And we do have to have a buyer broker in order to like write, right. write up. Yeah. That's when you're going to get an offer anyway. So you're leading up to that anyway, and that's the point when you can say that, look, you know what, sign the contract or you're not going to get the house. And people are really fighting you at that yeah, point. That's all right. If you're, if we're, we might get six offers on this house, and it's just another thing that if you want to write an offer, it's going to take time, and by the time we get all this paperwork done, there's going to be six offers on this house. So just some tricks, just to think about. You could make it subject, or you could make the contract exclusive to one property, right? This is just an offer for this one property. That's one way to handle it. One, another way, if you want to contract with them, Joel, give me a chance to prove myself. Most agents want six months on a contract. Just sign for 30 days. Let me show you that I'm going to go to work to find you the absolute best home. Because it gets them in process of signing, and you'll probably find something in 30 days anyway, right? Then, so shorten that agency time frame. That's a way. You can offer a condition or a, con a concession of some kind to get them to take action. But I am, this cost me 15,000 bucks at the end of, was it the end of last year or the first? Right, 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 Freaking right, 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 killed me. I spent a lot of time with a buyer that was looking to buy a duplex up off Wasatch. She had a couple other people looking for it too, but I gave her that kind of like, look, I'm going to do the right job. I'm going to help you find it and everything, right? And so it's cool, great. I go on a cruise. The right freaking duplex comes on the market. Another agent shows it to her. I had her on an automatic feed of listings that were coming anyway, so mine came, but I should have put an agent in charge of it while I was gone saying, if something like this comes up, call her. She goes and buys the damn thing, $500,000, closed in like 12 days, and I lost 15 grand. Just yeah. like that. It sucked. So, yeah, people are not loyal. get them yes. signed. And that gal, I knew her son very well. It was brutal. So, it, uh, yeah, it just, it's tough. So, yep. So, I mean, I just, uh, and, there's other great agents out there like me and you that are going to be competing for the business and say, oh, you don't have an agency relationship with them. Are they doing a good job? Eh, he's okay, but I don't really love him. Okay, let me show you what I'm going to do. So it's competitive. You might want to get a contract signed. Tyler. One thing I need to get one signed just with this one client I'm working with now, like I got, I've got him here in the office and I like to show him, like all the MLS, like we'll go through the houses and like, well, let's go take a look at this one, this one, this one. And then I'm like, all right, so we can go take a look at a few. My office requires me to get this document signed. So we can go take a look at a couple of houses. Just says we're going to work exclusively together and we'll help you find the best home. It's kind of like that. And he wouldn't sign it. And I was like, all right, let's do this. I'll go ahead and show you a couple homes. But if my office starts bugging me after we look at homes, would you consider signing it then? He was like, yeah. So I went and showed him a couple of homes. And I was like, man, yeah, they're all over me about getting this thing signed. Could you go ahead and sign it for me? He signed it right there. Sometimes you just need to prove to people. I'd probably be a little, like, if I just met some dude or gal, like, at a property, I wouldn't sign a contract. I just wouldn't. I'd just yeah. be like, okay, well, you know what? I'll, I'll commit to work with you if you can show me that you're worth your salt, you know? So let's start working together. And if they're going to just assume my business and start getting me in process, test them for a week or so, and then I'd be like, all right, you're a rock star. Let's roll. So just be willing to prove yourself. Uh, but, again, this comes back to... Just being a professional, run. This business is not a hobby. It can be, I guess, actually. So forget I said that. It can be a hobby. It can be just for fun. But if you're here to make a living and turn it into a career, you have to operate like a professional. And professionals have standards. And they operate according to their standards. So adopt some standards. If you show up and use this presentation, you should have the right expectations, you should have their commitment to work exclusively, and you should be working with a buyer that is gonna buy soon, really soon, and not just drag their feet. So adopt this stuff. Take it out in the marketplace and use it. Your life is gonna be way better. Thanks for coming. Thank you, guys. Hey, last thing on your way out. If you guys want forms, like over the years you just build stuff that works or you steal it from other agents. These are forms I use to keep track of stuff, like buyer lead forms, a series of questions that I ask people. Did you, are these all in stacks or are they broken up?